Hey, what's up everybody? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I hope you're choosing God in all directions. You're letting God be the Lord of your life. And I want to tell y'all, yesterday, Sunday, was such a powerful message that my pastor preached. And you know, it was a hard message to preach. You know, uh, a message that convicts hearts, that touch hearts, that makes us to wonder if we're actually doing it ourselves. And he talked about the power of the tongue and swearing to the Lord and and he talked about how we really need to watch what we say that perversion that comes out of our mouths you know nasty language and you know we're all guilty of that I've been guilty of that a lot of times in my life you know there's a lot of things I said that I have should have never said to my parents to my brother to to people around me to, to my own family members but only Jesus and only the blood of Jesus can forgive. But you have to be willing to repent and change your life. And ever since I was changed on Liberty University that day, I knew I had to come to Christ. I knew I had to get rid of my pride and get rid of what I wanted to do and do things for Jesus Christ. And that is what it's going to take. And it's going to be hard. But God will never forsake you. He is your fortress and your strength. And you know... Today has been a great day for me. Um, of course, I went to school, took my brother home, and then I read some of the Bible, and I really did not know what I was going to preach on today, but God told me to read Revelation chapter 3. And I was reading Revelation chapter 3, and I was reading through it, and it was some amazing stuff. It talked about the, the seven stars, the seven churches, and everything, but when I was reading through the end of it, oh my, y'all really touched my heart it was so powerful and I wanted to share with y'all today and I'm sorry if I sound a little bit stuffy I look I have a stuffy nose right now but it doesn't matter if I'm tired or not it's all for the glory of God I told y'all I'm gonna make a video today tomorrow Wednesday and Thursday I might not be able to make a video Wednesday because I'm going to church um, around six o'clock but I should be able to make one before. But just in case, I'm definitely going to try to at least get four videos posted every week. And y'all, I ask at the bottom of my heart that y'all share this channel as much as you can. Because I tell you what, we, we live in the end times of day, and there's a lot of people who need Jesus Christ. A lot of people that are lost, and they're trying to find some happiness. They, they look at sex and drugs and alcohol, or maybe just something worldly that they like. It's the pride of life, Jesus says, and the lust of life, and, and the flesh wants us to follow the things of the world. And I tell y'all, the only thing that is going to solve that problem is Jesus Christ, His Word and his power and his saving in the blood you know jesus tells us to love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man loves the world the love of the father is not in him all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world we need to understand that we only can serve one god but the question is today i'm going to ask you all are you serving a dead god today or are you serving a living god i know for sure i serve a living god Maybe you're here here today, and maybe you're struggling in life. You're miserable. You're tired. You want to give up. You want to quit. But I'm going to tell you all that even though everything you go through, Jesus will get you through. You won't find it in sex or drugs or alcohol. You won't find it looking at an inappropriate thing on the internet. You won't find it arguing with your brother or your sister. You won't find it disrespecting your father and mother. You won't find it in, in sexual perversion or, or drugs or alcohol. You won't find it in a pol political standard. You only could find it through Jesus Christ. He came and humbled himself. It's a man who died for you. He'll take the hell and pain for you. He is the one who created you, God Almighty. He says, I have a plan for you. He loves you so much to give you the free will. Let's walk by humility today. Destroy our pride. So, before we get started, I ask that all of y'all pray with me right now. Pray with me. Get on your knees. 
or whatever you want and just, just pray with me because we need to get on our knees and worship the living God on a daily basis. Lord Jesus, we know, we know your time is coming soon. If you say you're coming as a thief, that no one knows the hour, even you don't know the hour. Lord, help us to listen to the Holy Spirit, to live by you share the word of God and win souls for Christ and stay in your word and use it as a sword. Lord, help us to love you and put you first above all things, to follow your commandments. Lord, that you say your mercies live forever because your compassion fails not. Lord, help us to understand that you are the only way, the only fight, the only truth. That you say you're the way, and the way, the life, and the truth, Lord. That you are the power of everything. That you are our creator. That you are our Savior. And Lord, I pray for every soul that is listening tonight in this video, Lord. And not only that, I pray for their families. I pray for the ones around them, Lord. That they understand that they need to destroy the stuff that they think is good. And start following you and surrendering. Lord, we can only be true again and born again Christians as if we are willing to surrender and love not the world. And we need to depart from the, wor the world, Lord, and love you the kingdom of God. Lord, use us for your mercy. Use us for your preaching. Persecution will come, Lord, but you are our Savior. I ask this in your name and the Holy Spirit and the Father, Lord, that you do miracles and that you work, not only in the heart of me, but the ones around me, Lord, because, Lord, we need you less of ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord, amen. I'm going to tell you all here today that you need to let the Holy Spirit work. Let Him use you. Your might and your powerful things is nowhere close to the power of God. You might be powerful when it comes to having a lot of money or power when it comes to political standard or government. Maybe you're just a famous person or a popular rapper. But it means, it means nothing to Jesus. And deep down in your heart, you're not finding happiness yourself. So let's be more of God today. Because what we're reading in Revelations chapter 3 today is going to be talking about we need to be less of ourselves, more of Him. So everyone, uh, please open your Bibles to Revelations chapter 3. And we're going to start off, if you can... Um, we're going to start off in verse 17 of Revelations chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 17, and we're going to be reading all the way to verse 22, which is the end of the chapter. And when I was reading this, God was speaking, and it talks about Jesus knocking on the door. And it talks about how our riches and the things that we want to do, it, it never will solve peace and love and joy, that we're still miserable, that we're still looking for. And the thing is, when you spread the gospel, you are given the power by the Holy Spirit to speak. When you read God's word, the Holy Spirit speaks to you and teaches you the ways of wisdom, perfection, and love. But when you look at the world, when you spread of the world, and you, you look at the things of the world, the supernatural does not speak to you. You find no happiness. You find you don't gain more wisdom. You don't gain more knowledge, but you you gain nothing. You actually gain less. And this is what Satan wants to do. He wants us to put us in a mindset that we look upon the world so we may gain less. That we may never have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because he, if he, he knows if we ignore him, that will be the unforgivable sin. You know... And I had someone tell me, and I, they told me that, G, that Jesus will not forgive murder. They told me that murder cannot be forgiven. Well, let me tell you, if that was true, Paul would never have the chance to be the greatest apostle to ever live. He murdered Christians left and right, but he was the greatest apostle. One of the greatest apostles to ever live. God can forgive all sins. But you have to be willing to depart and leave your wicked ways and come to Christ. You can't come to Christ and still live in your sins and still live in your, in your doubt and your hatred. You need to live by the living God. 
It's no longer a few. And I, when I went to Liberty University the six months ago, the second time, there was this group here. They were called the Red Letters. They were a really, really awesome group. And, you know, they were, of course, singing a bunch of gospel songs. They sang a really powerful song that really got my heart and, you know, my uh, assistant pastor's heart as well and the other people that were with me, my brother and everyone else. The song said, more of him and less of me. More of him and he is everything. I want to tell y'all that we need to be more of God and less of ourselves. That he has the solving to everything. Whatever problem you have in your life, He will be there to comfort you. Does that mean that all your problems in your life are going to go away on this earth? No. But it means that He'll be there to give you the power to overcome it. So let's start off in verse 17 in Revelation chapter 3. I'm over here uh, talking too much, but you know, let's get to God's Word. Because God's Word is the most important thing here today that we need to be talking about. So let's start off in verse 17. And it says, Because those say as I am rich, and increases with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest that though not, not wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and of white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that though the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with thy saw, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in the throne, even as also overcome and set down with my father in the throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear. The Spirit saith, for the churches oh thank you Lord for your word what a powerful powerful verses and what a powerful chapter so let's so what what is God talking about what is what is the Holy Spirit telling us here he's telling us here in verse 17 he says because those saith I'm rich and increases with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou are wretched and miserable so God says, here you go, you have all the riches in the world. You increase if you keep in increasing your sex and you keep increasing your alcohol and you keep increasing in the world and, and you become more popular and you might be the greatest basketball player, the greatest football player or the best politician ever. God says, even though you have all of that, you are still miserable and you still find no happiness. I'm going to tell y'all right now, the world will not find happiness for you. The world is going to perish. Jesus says in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, What profit if a man, if he shall gain the whole world, but lose his own soul? You know, I mention that verse a lot on this channel, but I'm going to tell you it is very true, and we need to hear it over and over again. What profit if me, if I gain all the riches and all the sex and all the alcohol in the world, when I'm still miserable, I'm still sad? And I'm still living in sorrow and hatred and anger. You know, the scientists, they, they're looking for cures. They find cures for all kinds of things. Maybe they have a cure for the flu, a flu shot, or maybe uh, a shot for COVID. They might find all these things, but they never can find the cure for curing sin, making things perfect. The world is getting worse and worse every day. You know why? Because the world is going to perish. The world is not of God. For God has the answer. Maybe some of y'all here today that are listening. Maybe you call yourself a Christian. Maybe you call yourself something else. Maybe you're drifting from God. But you're looking for something. You're looking for joy. You're looking for happiness. You want something to just give you the power to do what you truly want to do I'm going to tell you God has given us all gifts he's given me gifts and y'all that are listening today he has given you a gift but you have to be willing to surrender for God to use you 
God will use you. And I'm telling you all here today that God has a plan for your life. That he will use you. The riches of this world will keep you miserable and keep lying to you. Because that is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to stay miserable. The enemy, enemy wants you to stay thinking that you're not good enough for yourself. But God says, he says, because they'll say, I'm rich, I'm, I'm powerful. That our prideful hearts say, I'm rich and I increase it with goods and, and I have need of nothing. And no, it's not that though are wretched and miserable. So God's saying that even though you're prideful in your heart, even though you might be popular, even though you might be the greatest singer or the greatest basketball player to live, that God is saying to you, even though you have all of that, you're still wretched and you're still miserable and you're poor and blind and naked. Most of the world today is blind. We think we have the right answer. We think that if we follow ourselves, we will find the right answer. And I want to tell you all, if that was true, then this world will not be getting worse and worse every day. And inflation is going up in this country. We have a nation that say, says that it's okay to be whoever you want, that if you could change your body, that you could either be a man or a woman, that you could be a transgender, that it's okay for a man to be with a man, and it's okay for a woman to be with a woman. And we, we try to find the happiness and stuff like that. And we notice that even though they keep following that, the, the inflation keeps getting worse, the, the gas prices keep getting worse, the, the Republicans and the Democrats versus each other keep getting worse and worse and worse every day. This nation starts is starting to lose its freedom and start becoming more of a dictatorship. That this nation is starting to becoming more of loving money instead of fearing God. You know why that's happening? Because we're too busy in, in our hearts saying, I want to be who I want. I want to be rich. I want to I wanna increase instead of saying I want to surrender to God. But I want you all to look at verse 18 with me. Jesus says, I counsel that a buy of me a gold try the fire. That thou mayest be rich in white bread. That thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy eyes open. That thou mayest see. So God's saying, when you come to me, when you surrender your heart, and it's no longer about you increasing yourself, but it's about increasing God and fearing God. That you are now able to see that now you're able to really fulfill your true dream that you wanted to do. See, God has a plan for anyone. It doesn't matter if you're an unbeliever or not. God has a plan for you. But if you don't put your trust in Jesus, he cannot use you. What an awesome God we have. He sent his son to die on the cross so that he may see through the blood so we may have a relationship with him. But here you go. The world's trying to increase its, its goods, the world and the pleasures of it. While God says, I will increase you, that you will no longer be, be naked through sin, but you may be a child through the living God. That you will no longer be miserable or sorrowful. That I will give you the power to overcome sin. I'll give you the power to overcome the world. I'm going to be your comforter. I'm going to be your reminder. I'm going to be your fortress. I'm going to make you flourish. God wants America to be a fearing God nation. God will bless the nation, but we have to be willing to stop worrying about what we want to do, even though we're miserable. And I'm telling you, that before I came to Christ, and I promise you, this is deep down 100% in my heart. I'm telling y'all here today, even though I love the world, and I was having a little bit fun, and I was doing what I wanted to do, I was still sad. I still had miserable. I kept hardening my heart. My heart kept getting harder instead of better. Because it says in the Bible that you were created in the image of God. You were created to live for the living God. Your heart is created to live for the living God of all gods and all lords and all kings. So when you live by your own accords, of course your, of course your heart's going to be miserable because that's not what you're created for. You were created to serve a living God, a loving God. A God that we don't deserve, that we deserve hell and judgment every day. 
And I'm going to tell y'all, I'd rather the truth be told and I'd rather be convicted by God so I may change than for me to live by my own, own accords and be miserable and keep growing the road to hell. God says in verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke them. God, Jesus says, I love you and I want a relationship with you, but I cannot have a relationship with you if you don't have the will to come to me. How can Jesus Christ have a relationship with a nation or a person if they are not willing to listen? Impossible. And some people will say, oh, well, if God was real, then this, this wouldn't be going on in the world right now. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of things that wouldn't be going on this world today if we were willing to surrender. God wants to help you. And I'm talking to y'all that are listening to here. Is your heart right with God? Do you know God? Is your heart miserable today? Only Jesus can solve that problem. He says that in verse 20. Listen to what he says in verse 20. Behold, I stand and I, and I knock on the door. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. And he will sup with me. And he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in thy throne. Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in the throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. God says, no matter how much you ignore me, no matter how much you blast in my name, no matter how much you throw me on the cross, and no matter how much you throw spears and hate me and do all and throw all these things upon me, I'm going to die for you. I love you. That's the God we serve. No matter what they did to Jesus on that cross, no matter how much they disagreed with him, no matter how much they persecuted him, he sat there and he fulfilled what he wanted to do for you. He took the hell and pain for you. I'm talking to y'all. He, he, he took the hell and pain for my soul. For my soul. The one that blasphemed his name. The one that said God wasn't real. The one that ignored him. The one that was deceiving and lying. That is the God who died for me. That, that is the son who, who took his blood and washed my sins into the trash. That is the God I serve. I'd rather humble myself today and live in eternity with God but then be prideful and live, live no longer in hell. It's up to y'all. God's knocking on the door today. Maybe you're ignoring him. He says in the verse 21, Whosoever overcometh will change. Whosoever overcometh will be in my throne, he says. You look at Jesus, he overcame, and you look where he went, he went to heaven. God's saying that you can be the same as me. You might not be perfect, you might not be the one to die on the cross, but you may be changed, and I may use you so you may go to heaven. But y'all, the, the point of this preaching today in, in Revelation chapter 3 is that God will use you but you have to be willing to open the door. God is a gift. And every heart that is listening today and every family member around you and every heart. But you have to be willing to open that door and let him in. I promise you this world is not enough. And I promise you from experience and I promise you the people in my church, my father, my mother, my brother will tell you and my grandma, and my grandpa and all my family members will tell you today that this world is not enough. And Jesus will for sure tell you. Through Jesus Christ we can overcome. I ask that all of y'all pray with me today. Lord Jesus, I'd rather be convicted than go down the wrong path. Lord, I ask that you use me and use the ones that are listening today for your will so that we may win souls for Christ and that we may watch and pray and be faithful, fearing you. Lord, I pray for every soul 
here that is listening. They might not have another day tomorrow, but they take your will today, that they open the door today, that they are willing to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they surrender, and you will give them joy, peace, honor, and love, or that they will find their gift that they have been looking for, that they will no longer be miserable. What a God you are. I thank you, Lord, for giving me the words. I thank you for Revelation chapter 3. I thank you that you're always knocking on the door. Even if we're a Christian or not, you're still what? Lord, that you have a plan for all. Lord, help the souls come to you today. All around me and all around this world. Lord, that we be the light in the darkness. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord, amen. God bless you all. I thank you for watching. You know, I'm going to tell you one thing I've learned the most as a Christian. Is don't be afraid of the truth. Take in the truth and accept it. Because I'm going to tell you all, a lot of times I read God's word. I say, that touched my heart and I need to fix that. Because guess what? I'm always wrong and God is always right. God's word can convict and change hearts. God is the only one who sent his son to knock on the door for eternity. But I'm going to tell you all, God is, Jesus Christ is not only a lamb, but he's a lion. He's coming, and his judgment is coming. And I'm going to tell you all, he's knocking on the door, and he's telling you right now to accept him. Don't do not, y'all. I'm, I'm begging y'all with at the bottom of my heart. God has a plan for you. God will use you. Your sin and your miserable life will keep on going with the world, but through Christ, you'll have joyful and peace and mercy. This is what you were created for. God will use you in your gift. God bless y'all. Thank you for watching. Remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own accord and your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge Him. And he shall direct all your paths. He loves you. You'll keep knocking. Remember that Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the way, the life, the truth. No man has the power over him. But he will give us the power to overcome sin.